Good morning, this is Uncle Yab, and we're gabbing with Yab. Now today, I have a good friend of mine, he's a registered nurse. Tommy, how you doing, buddy? Great, how are you doing today? Good, good, man. I'm glad I got to coach you and stuff like that. Um, I've been wanting to talk to you about certain things, and uh, I knew you would be the guy for me to talk to you about. How you been doing? You been doing good? I'm doing all right. All right, all right. Now tell me something, Tommy, where are you from? Well, I grew up in Boston, and then we moved out to the country, Revere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the country called Revere. Oh, yeah, that's the country, all right. I hear you, I hear you. And we always talk about the military, so how much time you spend in the military? I did a few years in the Navy. Yeah, so I, that's where you get your nursing, your med medical field from, medical stock? Now, when I get out of the Navy, I went into nursing school. Oh, okay, okay. So how did you like that? I I'm 58 years old. I've been a nurse my whole life. <laughs> I guess I love it. I hear you, Tommy. Yeah, me and you've been knowing each other for quite a while now, and um, I'm going to get right to it, Tommy. Um, we got this pandemic going on. What do you think about it coming from your eyes as a registered nurse? Well, this is a very worrisome virus to me. Um, in the history of mankind, we have never vaccinated against the RNA virus which this is right um your dna viruses those are like uh chicken pox measles mumps rubella polio and then your rna viruses uh hiv uh, hep c uh what's the ebola right. and now this one right. so what's worrisome to me is that you know, Fauci and Burks and all these people, they're talking about vaccinations. This will be the first time in, in the history that we ever vaccinated against something like this. I keep telling everybody, get prepared. This, this virus is going to be around for a few years um, until we figure out how to get rid of it. And the way to get rid of it really is wear your mask, wash your hands, and stay away from each other. Exactly. Now, we've been told all that, like you said, Dr. Fauci's been saying all that. And it seems to me that it's been working. Now, what do you think what happens when it spikes, like down south and things like that? What makes it what makes it do that? Because people don't they don't adhere to what they're supposed to do. Oh. If you remember you saw all the bars were opening up, all the restaurants were open up and, and they were showing pictures of people all inside those places with no mask on That's and they were true. all on top of each other. That's true. That's this true. is a very, very unforgiving virus. Um, there's things that the nurses and doctors, I, I, listen, I'd love to be able to tell you, they don't tell you people what's going on. They don't tell you about all the amputations. And the reason why people don't hear about all the amputations that are going on with this disease is 95% of those people die anyways. Wow. So nobody tells you Nana went to the rest, uh, the, the, uh, funeral parlor in three pieces. And that's something I heard too. And then it was also something that was um, that was disturbing to me. A lot of people are getting like lung tramp, lung transplants and stuff like that. And that's all stemming from the virus and, and the aftermath of it. Yeah, this is. I, that's why I keep saying. I say the word worrisome. I don't want you to hide under your bed. I want you to wear a mask, wash your hands, stay away from people. And uh, yeah, it, this is why it's worrisome. It attacks. Everybody differently, right. it seems. Some people it attacks their kidneys. Some people it's their lungs. Some people it's their heart. You heard the professional baseball player for the Red Sox. He's out with cardiomyopathy caused by the virus. Wow. Cardiomyopathy, enlargement of the heart. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, Tommy, um, that's something I didn't know about. But um, I did see that, like you said, it attacks people certain ways. Like some people may not survive it. Other people might not have symptoms. So... Let, see, tell me a little bit about the uh, asymptomatic thing. How do how do people get involved with that versus a full blown? Well, that's that's the thing, Larry. You have to understand. We, we don't understand that. We don't understand why mm. it attacks ten people differently. Right. And some right. people they don't even know they have it, and some people they get it and they're dead in four or five days. I mean, that's what we don't understand about this virus. Right. And the drugs. That's what we don't understand about that either. Um, the drug that the president was touting all the time, the Plaquenil, that's another, that's the brand name, Plaquenil. Right. Um, the hypercore. The, the exactly. And you get the dexamethasone, you got the remdesivir. The problem with this is, is one of the drugs worked for two people, but didn't work for the other eight people. 
and we're finding that with all the different drugs that some of them work for some people and some of them don't work at all for anybody. Wow. That's how bizarre this virus is. Jesus. I remember a couple of years ago we had the Ebola and it didn't seem like people were afraid of Ebola like they are with this coronavirus. Well, that wasn't here. That was on a different continent. Oh, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. So you're saying it was generated in, say, Africa or whatever it generated from. It, that's basically, that's a virus from a bat and they're eating a the fruit and the people eat the fruit that the bat has bitten into and then I they get, get the you. Ebola. I get you. So that, that's, it's not highly transmissible as as much as this is. Oh, I get you. I get you. So um, do you think um, China was responsible for it? The uh, COVID-19? <laughs> Listen, we have to, we can't even worry about that now. We have to worry about this virus. We have to conquer that. And let me tell you something. You're gonna see a lot of you're gonna see a lot of bad things from this virus until we get out. We we've got to address it better. Yeah, yeah. Now, what about the vaccine? Do you think they have a vaccine, or you think they get close to it? What are your thoughts? What did I tell you earlier? We've never vaccinated an RNA virus, so I, I'm praying. Listen, I I don't want to see anybody else die from this. Yeah, I so, get you. I get you down. So, I listen. I I get on my knees and I beg for a vaccination, but. I'm skeptical. Yeah, and I'm I'm the same way. I'm skeptical too. Now, by the reason you know, if we because we work in a hospital, we may get voluntold to take it. But I really don't want to take it, Tommy. I don't want to. I, I don't want to. I want to just because knock on wood, I'm doing good, and um, you know, thank God that I haven't had no problems in my family. But you know, who else? Nobody else can say that. Somebody else might have the, have symptoms and be going having a hard time. But like you said. I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm washing my hands if I'm supposed to. I go home, I take showers, and I, I don't go around a lot of crowds. And I'm doing what I'm doing, so hopefully I can keep doing it, and hopefully I stay well. You know, just like you, you know, I think you had some problem with, you know, back and forth in the hospital, but you, you're doing good now. But you never can tell. You never can tell because this, uh, this virus has no names, no faces, no ages, mm. and it takes no prisoners. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's just crazy. But um, I'm glad I was able to talk to you and get a perspective from a, a nurse, a, a hospital person, a medical performance person about the, about this pandemic, about the virus. And um, any last words? Stay safe, my friend. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tommy. And once again, you guys, this is Uncle Yab, and we're gabbing with Yab. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace. That was good.